At 5.04, I am going to call our special Board of Finance meeting um, to order. Um, the first agenda, on, the first item on the agenda is the agenda. Do we have a motion, please? Thank you, Councillor Jang. Is there a second? Second. Great. Thank you, Councillor Barlow. Um, and all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. And the motion carries unanimously. Um, the um, next item is public forum. Are there any members of the public wishing to speak to the Board of Finance today? Being none, we will um, close the public forum and move on to item 3.1, replacement of the hot water system and boiler at Letty. Kim, why don't you give us a brief overview? Sure. Thank you, Councilor Jang. So um, I will try to be brief here, but please ask questions if you have any, because this is a really interesting project. Um, so back in March, we put out an RFP to start working with an energy performance contractor. And I don't know if you are familiar with this, but in very short term, uh, what that means is that we will be moving forward to get all of our city buildings either to net zero energy or as close to net zero energy as we can. And what they'll help us do is make the best game plan to arrive there in an efficient way and dealing with the costs that we can actually afford. So we'll be looking at different ways of doing things. Um, they've helped us with the remote sub tank in this building, which we talked about last week. And then the next project that we're also moving forward on, which is similar to the sump tank project, is um, replacing the domestic hot water system at Letty Arena and also at the same time their boiler system. So um, this project, like the one that we talked about last week, is just a very small part of the actual project at Letty, but it's something that was imminent that if we don't get this done, they're not going to have any hot water there this winter, which is problematic for a lot of reasons. So um, what we've looked at doing is we've looked at upgrading this system with both an all electric system and a 96% efficient gas, natural gas system. Um, for a lot of reasons to include timelines and cost, uh, we decided to go forward with the natural gas system. It's a 96% efficient system. It has redundancy. It can have controls added to it. Um, included within all of the design and engineering for this project, um, not only does it include the new system, but it includes upgrading the piping, all the expansion tanks. It includes filling in the holes of the exterior building where we're letting in cold and hot air. Um, which most of us know is like the number one thing you can do for efficiency in a building. Um, and we're gonna be able to upgrade these and have our control system put on them also, just like we do in a lot of our other buildings so that we can constantly regulate the temperatures of the water and the air and keep that as energy as efficient as possible. So what we're doing here today is asking your approval to move this forward, um, to have this done and, uh, the materials that we have um, in the system are available that we can have it all installed before the winter comes. Great, thank you, Ken. Um, any questions from the board or is someone ready to make a motion? Yes, Councilor Barlow. Um, yes, um, I, had, I had questions about the funding. It seems like we're taking funding that had been allocated to a right. project and reallocating it. You're right. Is that something that happened recently or was that already anticipated during sort of the budgeting process? So it was not necessarily anticipated during the budgeting process. So 
what we had anticipated was um, you, we were going to put in two new rooftop units at the Miller Center per year, just to keep up with things and make sure that there was, there were no systems going towards the end of life. But we came up with a couple things. One is that with our HVAC team, the way we have it now, they're very knowledgeable and they've been servicing them very regularly and doing a great job of it. And the RTUs rooftop units at the Miller Center are in great shape compared to a lot of things in the city. So just going to add in that, you know, as things pop up, though, you have to look at everything. Right. And that's where, you know, while that was on the list to get done, something like this pops up. You have to look at your full list and be right. like, OK, I was going to make this. Happen. This became an emergency and the rooftop units were not an emergency. The other thing that we have started looking at with um, energy efficient investments is the fact that we could actually convert those rooftop units into all electric rooftop units as opposed to staying with natural gas as they were. So we decided that because they're working so well and because we'd actually rather make a better decision for the city, that we should use that money towards this emergency project so that we can make it happen. Okay. Does that, does that, yeah, that answers question? my question. Okay. My, my next question, which you also addressed, is when I was on the school board, we had a lot of deferred maintenance and we'd be, you know, trying to triage different projects. And what you ended up with at the end of that, or what the school district did, is a huge giant deferred maintenance um, problem. Well, and, we have a huge giant deferred maintenance problem. Right, so just to note that we have one. Right. And so, but luckily, Fortunately, whatever the word it would be is comes at the helm now. We've never had central facilities, never had anybody overseeing central facilities at that level. And so now that was a decision when you guys approved Kim's position, allowed us now to have somebody who's focusing on that. We had two HVAC people, one of whom I think it was some point last year got regraded to a higher level to so we have that expertise to look at the systems. And so that in the long run, what we're changing and doing now, we're in great shape, but that means there's still a backlog of, of work here in the city. And but those guys are, you know, they saving me a lot in five years. <laughs> yeah. which, and yeah. I would just add that this is part of um, why I spend a lot of time with Cindy and Kim is that I'm on the capital committee. And so, we're not, just to be clear, as much as I think Cindy and Kim would make the right decision, this is not just like those two saying, we don't need this, we do need this. All of these decisions are discussed in the Capitol Committee, which is, you know, a very multi-departmental team, including Ashley, Fire and Safety, um, City Arts, and plenty of others. So there's going to be, I think, a lot of this kind of horse trading of we were going to do this, but now this is broken. And so we'll talk those things out with you because obviously as financial stewards of the city, you have an important role to play here as well. well thank you. That was my only, my only question, but thank okay. you for sure. answering it. Sure. Any other questions? Yep. A um, couple of things. And I think with this one is one thing we identified as part of this budget process is to get regular updates, grants updates. Um, for example, FY20 or every six months, every quarter. Yeah. I see here that we have like carry over facility capital content, you know, of 2023, FY20. And was just wondering how much money is collected. Almost nothing. Okay. <laughs> so the reason we have that from FY23 is because we started having problems with the hot water domestic system several years ago, and we knew it was something that we had to address. So I had that banked away to start working on the hot water system. So that's why we saved it for that. Perfect. And now the second question is specific to the 96% home versus 100%. Yes. But I was just wondering what would be the price difference? Well, that's a great question. So how you would get to 100% efficient on a natural gas system can absolutely be done. It would involve working with BGS and buying renewable 
um, energy credits to make up that 4%, which we can absolutely do. Okay. So it's possible. Absolutely. For example, yeah. And just to kind of reiterate is that this is just a tiny, tiny part of the project of the building. And by doing it this way, this will fit in with the next upgrades that we do as the whole building okay. to keep it energy efficient. And every time we look at it, we're gonna look at, should it be all electric? Should it be part electric? Should it be all natural gas? Why would we go to that decision? How is it going to be the best case for the city? Um, and make the best decision that we can based on that information and cost. Um, and example. Yes, we do. <laughs> Yeah, um, and also, you know, for example, the specific building is not being used by the whole community. And people across the region actually are using it, right? right? Yes. 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 And I was just wondering also if there is an opportunity to increase the means of accessing the facilities in order to start to grab money, because this is only more than half a million dollars. And what's sure. next also in very expensive. Cindy, you might be able to get to that. Yeah, so we yeah. just, I mean, we continue to increase the fees and we increase the fees again this upcoming year, but that's supporting the general fund. I mean, there's not that we're not trying to cover the cost, the direct cost of maintaining the building, but there's very little that we're able to do here in the city that is able to generate the additional revenue for a capital. Whether or not down the line we should, yeah. that's, you know, another you should, and it's a whole other ball of wax. So I'm going to try to contain that conversation. But to say that it is something that the Capitol Committee, it keeps coming up in all these meetings. And um, so it's something on our mind, which is, you know, can we get to a place in the next year or two that when we're saying, here's the project we'd like to do, we've also built in these costs for repair and maintenance down the line. Like, we're not there, but to do more of that building in so that we don't wind up adding to the deficit of um, work that needs to be done. And it's, you know, that's a big one that like, let's say the waterfront and the campground, those guys are, that's making that revenue. That money does not go into a capital fund. That goes into the general fund. And so there's, you know, that's, should those have, should those have been years past enterprise funds so you could Put that money back into those places. You know, the campground's getting tired, the arena's getting tired, uh, but we we didn't. And now to to do it now would be a big impact on the channel. So it is it's a challenge. Very glad to hear that you're thinking of it and knowing that people have already started to shake because yes. the tax bill has been up. High school yeah. has been up yes. again. Yeah. So it's not yeah. yeah. different. But well, I'm happy to make the motion as indicated. Well, okay. the clerk. <laughs> you did it. Oh, I, was, I was thinking I was going to chirp you out. <laughs> I've only done that a few times. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Jen. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, President Paul. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And the motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I also would like to point out that the phone number who has just joined is Mayor Morell Weinberger. <laughs> um, so um, we are at item 3.2. Um, Chief Murad indicated he was on his way here and he is not here yet. So, um, Mayor, maybe you could weigh in and let us know if you would like to kick this off or if you'd like a brief five minute recess um, and to wait for um, John to get here. And maybe Moreau is not. There we go. Oh, there we go. I, <laughs> just... uh, I was trying to figure out how to unmute. Sorry about that. I figured it out. Um, um, sure. So, how did John give you a sense of when he's going to get there? Um, I thought he was going to be here already. So, um, let yeah. me just see what's going on here.
I'm happy to, to start and he can. Yep, I think uh, that might be wise. All right. So this is a significant milestone in the. This Sorry, Mayor, he here. just got here. So you can stop okay. and it's okay. <laughs> Wherever you want right, to sit, good. Chief, is fine. Um, the mayor is joining on the phone and he was just about to start when you got here in the nick of time. So I'm going to keep talking for 10 seconds so you like sit down and get yourself settled. And then when you do, you can just give us a brief overview of item 3.2, please. Uh, which is the care scheme? Yes. Yes. Wonderful. Uh, so I'm settled. Do you want me to jump in or jump in? There? Okay. No questions uh, yet. Sure. <laughs> um, so obviously, you know, this has been a long uh, process. We, we wanted to move forward. We've been working a lot at it. We've had, I think, some productive meetings over the past uh, couple of weeks. Jackie Corbley has been uh, discussing with the hospital at length about sort of how we make this work. Um, and we have a couple of, of pressure points right now. One is DMH, which uh, the Vermont Department of Mental Health, uh, which has given us a grant uh, that's federal money and they need to see it spent. So we need to make some, uh, some yardage as it were and, and get this ball down the field a bit. Um, we have come to the, the realization that an EMT or an EMTA or EMT plus is not the way to go, nor is a paramedic. They have too many protocols in their, uh, uh, in, in, in their own uh, protocols. <laughs> there are too many protocols that prevent them from uh, deferring uh, healthcare away from the hospital. And that is a good component of what this uh, team is going to do. It's also a significant component of why we were awarded the grant from the Department of Mental Health to move uh, treatment away from the hospital and cease overburdening the emergency department. Uh, as a result, uh, EMTs and paramedics are not the best for that because their basic mode of operation is to get people up to that hospital. And so instead, we believe that working with RNs, with registered nurses, is going to be the best course of action, particularly home health care nurses, potentially. Uh, and we're working with the hospital to make that happen. The hospital has agreed to uh, cost share. Uh, we're working out what that exactly is going to look like. Um, but uh, with the, the money the city has allocated, with the money that the DM, that DMH has provided via the federal grant, um, we're confident we can make this work. We need now to put forward the job descriptions for the clinician and for the team supervisor, who is also a clinician. Um, and so those two clinicians and that supervisor clinician will be employees of the city of Burlington. Uh, the uh, nurses, uh, the medical half of this team will in all likelihood be co-employees of the city and of the hospital. Um, again, I probably should have started with this. The, the, the point of the program is to have clinicians co-deploying with medical professionals. Uh, what we've learned, however, is that the medical professionals but it will, will not be paramedics as initially assumed, but are better suited as RNs or registered nurses. And I, I don't know, Mr. Mayor, if you want to add anything to that or. Sure. I mean, I just think uh, this is a pretty significant milestone, as the Chief was saying, in this substantial journey to get this new capacity stood up. We are nearing an agreement with the hospital on the details of how this will work. We don't have that completely. Uh, it, that, that is not complete yet, but we think but it is prudent and helpful to getting this team stood up as quickly as possible for the council to approve the creation of these three positions tonight. It's about, you know, it's a multi-month process from the moment that we Post these positions, which we can't do until the council creates them. It, you know, it's it's three months, generally speaking, before a new position can be filled. In those three months, um, we are pretty optimistic we can nail down the remaining questions uh, with how 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 the city and the hospital work together with this new capacity, and we finalize um, the. Uh, remaining budget quick issues. I think it's news to this group that um, we 
uh, will get some kind of financial commitment from the hospital in addition to the state uh, funding it, it appears very likely the details of that are to be nailed down um, and I think that all that together puts us in striking distance of um, you know, resolving any remaining budget questions about how we do this. So all in all, this is a step forward. It's good news. I appreciate the the team led by the chief and Jackie Corbley and Lacey Smith um, that has us on the cusp of, of, uh, of operationalizing this. And I think we'll be back um, towards the end of the summer um, with a further update on exactly what to look for in terms of uh, turning on the on switch with this new team. Great, thank you, Mayor. Um, I'll open it up for questions. Councilor Jen, was that a question or a? Yeah. Okay, great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, um, I think from my perspective, the care, the going on the crisis assessment response, right? And from my perspective, we are we are we are tackling it without any, let's say, community involvement. Funds are being created. It seems also the city allocated $400,000 to it. It seems only these positions are over half a million dollars already. I wanted to understand how much like you envision the care team cost, right? Because this is just a couple of positions here. Well, so uh, I think that you know our our budgeting is uh, is preliminary, um, uh, but we have gone over the pieces. You know, personnel as with any program like this is the bulk of that cost. Uh, that personnel is the supervisor, on call money for the supervisor, uh, the two clinicians, um, and then the two registered nurses. Uh, and the registered nurses, we hope to have them shared to some extent with the hospital to be determined. But when you look at the totality of that cost, that personnel cost is, is in the realm of about $650,000 per year. Um, now, uh, the for five positions, it's five positions, and that's with fringe, but that's with benefits and everything. So salary and benefits uh, around $650,000. Startup costs in year one are going to be greater than in year two. Uh, we are going to need technology, we're going to need equipment, um, and we're going to need a vehicle in which they can move. One thing that I have not factored in is that we have space in uh, One North Avenue for this. We do, we, we're going to have to incur capital construction costs in reconfiguring parts of the building. Um, and that's coming to us irrespective of this team. We have to create, we've, we've carved a corner of One North Avenue out for Cape um, and Burlington Cares will sit within Cape, but that carving still needs more work to be done. We, we have to move right now, uh, there's a, a space that is being used by the CSOs that needs to move over uh, to a different part of the building so that Cape can actually expand into the CSO space, but the CSOs can still have space. So there's interior reconfiguration work that needs to be done. That's not built into this budget, but it is going to, to be something we're going to have to tackle um, uh, in order to have these folks, once we hire them, having a place to sit. But uh, the overall costs, you know, once you add in the startup costs, it's it's about uh, somewhere in the vicinity of 850 or a little bit more for year one and somewhere in the vicinity of, nine, of 700 or a little bit more for year two. But the DMH grant covers almost half of that, not quite. Um, the city has allocated monies in year one and year two. Uh, and, uh, you know, so that's that's basically the cost. Um, uh, 800 plus uh eight, eight i'm sorry uh eight, 870 or so for year one um and why not this position be house at the fire department uh the fire department it has doesn't have I, fire department has less space than the police department does has has greater issues right now with actually integrating that space than the police department does uh we expect for this team to be uh to to you know uh Gender is going to be, is, isn't an issue for the police department. It is in, for the fire department at the moment in, in places, uh, but physical space is the big issue. And then secondarily, I think the issue is that the call, these calls for service come through police dispatch. Yep. I mean, I would be supporting this, but I really hope that we had a different approach about the care model. From my perspective, it's just coming from up 
to down and no involvement of the committee, no, you know, no task force, no experts. It, 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 and for my, it's, it's important. And this is also very respectful, right? I'm not trying to give, but I really thought that we could have different approach than creating this position, having a supervisor who would respond to the queue and also where to house this too, where to house the care model also is a, is a, is a but I'm supporting this, this position. So, so if I may, th there was quite a bit of community involvement in the earliest stages of this, a lot with uh, stakeholders, um, in, including members of the city council and including uh, public members of the public who have lived experience with regard to the kinds of response that we expect CARES to do. Um, and since then, there this has been circulated uh, with stakeholders in the city council, with stakeholders on the police commission. Uh, it's gotten significant input from those uh, entities, and even even up until a few days ago, we were making changes. Uh, the chief of staff and I, based on input from the police commission. Thank you. Yes. Thanks. Um, just wanted to say, I, I, you know, this this program. As, as most of us know, came as a result. It was an incredibly unusual situation. It came as a result of two parents who brought this forward under the CAHOOTS model and have been patiently working on this with the city for two and a half years. Um, not only were they intimately involved with the way that this all came about, they actually helped to draft the RFP so we had two citizens who were helping us with the RFP, which in the years that I've been doing this, I have never seen that happen before. Um, and they had a lot of input into that RFP. It did not end up being exactly the program that they had envisioned. You know, everyone should know that. And there are, and they have challenges with the way that it, it ended up growing out. They were, they were changes that either we did them and got the program going, or we didn't do them and probably waited another two years for it to happen because the only response to the RFP was the Howard Center, who is in the midst of its own items that it must take care of to, 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 go, to move forward as an organization. And it was not their highest priority, understandably. So, you know, I, you know, Councillor Councilor McGee is not here. I know that he has concerns. I have concerns. I would prefer that this not be, um, I would prefer that this be in a community based, like in Cape. And personally, I feel that Cape should be its own department, the third part of public safety. But for now, this is where it need it must be because this is what we have. And I think it's better for us to have this and move forward with it than to not have it. So, um, and I look forward to it being, a, you know, it's not, it's not 24 seven. I'm hopeful that at some point it will be 24 um, seven, but we're getting there. And cahoots did not start just like that either. So, um, you know, I, I'm, I do think that it had a lot of community involvement. Um, the only thing that it did not do just in the interest of full disclosure is that the job descriptions were not ready at the last public safety committee meeting. And so it did not go to the public safety committee. However, it spent a lot of time and got a ton of input from the police commission. So I'm comfortable with that because I, I know that they put in that effort, particularly a couple of the police commissioners. So I'll stop. But anyway, I'm supportive of this. Um, I think, Councilor Jane, did you already make the motion? Not yet. Okay, well then I'll make the motion as recommended. Just for a point of uh, information before you do that, President Paul, the, um, on review earlier, I did find some issues with the way the motion was written on oh. on our civic uh, clerk. So it is reflected correctly in the updated documents that were posted earlier today. Okay. So do you want me to the so do you, do you want me to move the amended or do you yes. want me to, the amended um, recommended action as as. Indicated. As amended on civic clerk. <laughs> Thank you. Great. Is there a second to the amended res? No, it's not a resolution. To the, the amended, amended motion language. Amended motion language. <laughs> so, 
Thank you, Councillor Barlow. Any further discussion? Um, then it looks like we're ready for a vote. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. And the motion carries unanimously. And that brings us to adjournment. And I will, without objection, adjourn us at 5.34 p.m. Okay.